Well, I would like to begin this morning by wishing all of you a very happy sixth day of Christmas. Did you know it was the sixth day of Christmas? Some people mistakenly think that the 12 days of Christmas are the 12 days leading up to Christmas, but they're not. The 12 days of Christmas are the 12 days between Christmas and Epiphany, which we're going to celebrate next Sunday when the Magi followed that star of wonder and were led to the baby Jesus. So I want you to know that even though Christmas Day has come and gone, we're still celebrating Christmas. We're still in the Christmas season. And that's why I'm wearing my Christmas colors. We're still singing Christmas carols today. We've got our candles and and all these beautiful decorations because it's still Christmas. And also before us this morning is this beautiful painting of the Nativity. And this painting was painted uh, by a very talented local artist who also happens to be a longstanding member of our church, Paul Burdick. And Paul, thank you. Paul gifted this painting to our church. And it is such a beautiful thing for us to focus on as we are celebrating Christmas, the image of Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. And you'll see the front cover of your bulletin today from the UCC also has an image of the baby. And it says, who is this child? Now, all that said, today's gospel reading then may be a bit jarring for us, because the baby is already 12 years old. I mean, Christmas was just a few days ago. It seems odd that in the church lectionary, the first reading after Christmas, the baby is already 12. So he's born, and then boom, he's already 12. And I often wondered what happened in all those years from the moment he was born till he's 12 years old in the temple. What was happening? But you know, the Bible doesn't tell us. There are no childhood stories of Jesus. The more I thought about it, the more I actually kind of like that, there, that there's not. Because it kind of demonstrates for me that Jesus probably just had a typical childhood, just like you and I did just an ordinary kid. Jesus didn't grow up knowing he was the son of God. This is something he came to discover as he grew. Now, between the age of 12 in today's gospel reading and the age of 30 when Jesus began his ministry, there are also no stories in the Bible. We have absolutely no idea what Jesus was doing from the age of 12 to the age of 30. The Bible doesn't tell us. But what we can assume is that as he was growing in years, he was also growing in wisdom. And he was growing to a greater understanding of his divine nature, of his oneness with God. And you know, that is what should be happening to all of us. As the years go on, as we get older, we should be growing every single year in wisdom and understanding. We should be like Jesus, rising in consciousness. And so my question for you on this last Sunday of 2018 is, as we look back on this past year, did we individually Did we as a nation and a world grow in wisdom and understanding and consciousness? Well, I know looking back, this has been a challenging year for us as a country. And I know to look back and to see images of children in cages, of people being tear gassed at our nation's border, seeing the Parkland school shooting, seeing attacks on journalists and and the the rise of white nationalism, we may think we did not grow in consciousness at all. In fact, we didn't grow in wisdom and understanding. We actually went the other way. 
But I'm here to tell you, there is good news of great joy for all people. Because 2018 was a year of great awakening. It was a year of great empowerment. It was a year where many people, for the first time ever in their lives, found their voice and spoke their truth. 2018 will be remembered as the birth of the Me Too and Time's Up movement. 2018 will be remembered as the year that young people spoke out against gun violence in their schools, and they are leading the way. And in 2018, more women, more people of color, more Muslims, and more LGBTQ people were elected to public office than ever before in the history of this great nation. So, yes, that, that deserves applaud. <laughs> so please do not despair, and please do not go cursing 2018 and saying, good riddance, I'm so glad that year's over. Because I want us to look back and I want us to see that it was a year of great awakening. Healing is happening. Yes, there, there, there's a wound, but it is healing. And I want us to acknowledge that and give thanks to God for that. And I also want us, as we move forward, to continue to recommit ourselves to being the change that we wish to see in the world in 2019. And that is what the burning bowl ceremony is all about. Today, my homily is going to be a little bit shorter than usual so that everybody who wants can participate in the burning bowl. If you've never experienced it before, the burning bowl is a very ancient and very sacred ceremony of transformation and renewal. Not just our church, but many churches celebrate this on the last Sunday of the year. It is a, a, a New Year's ritual, if you will. Now, I love rituals. And I actually love that the word ritual is a part of the word spiritual. Spiritual people throughout time have participated in rituals, in rites, in ceremonies. A rite, R-I-T-E, a rite is a ceremony that connects us with our spirit. So that's what we're doing today. We just heard in today's gospel that Mary and Joseph had an annual ritual. It said that every year they took Jesus and they went to Jerusalem for the Passover. That was their annual tradition, their yearly rite. And this here at Douglas UCC, this burning bowl is an annual ritual for us. What we are doing is we are taking the light from the Christ candle. And that is the fire that we are going to use today in the burning bowl to burn away all the things that we want to release and let go of so we can begin the new year afresh and welcome in all things new. Now, we know that fire appears many times in the Bible. And every time fire is in the Bible, it represents the presence and the power of God the fire of spirit, the light of the Christ. Remember John the Baptist a few Sundays ago said, I baptize you with water, but one is coming who's going to baptize you with fire. Now, last year at this time, I spoke with you about alchemy. Uh, some of you have read the book by Paulo Coelho, which is called The Alchemist. It has become a contemporary spiritual classic. If you haven't read it, I, I highly encourage you to do so. But what alchemists do, alchemists take base metals, and through the power of fire, they transform those base metals into precious metals, like gold and silver. Jesus was an alchemist. Through the power of fire, through the light of the Christ, he was able 
to transform water into wine, to transform lack into abundance, to transform dis-ease into health, and to transform death into new life. Now, it wasn't magic, although, interestingly enough, the word abracadabra, the word that we associate now with magic, is actually an ancient Hebrew word. So it's a word that maybe Jesus knew. And what abracadabra means is, I create through the power of my thoughts. I create through the power of my thoughts. And that is what we are doing today when we are performing alchemy. We are taking our base thoughts, our lower thoughts, and we are transforming them in the fire, the presence of God, the power of the Christ light. We're transforming them into higher thoughts, new ways of thinking and being. Your base thoughts are the thoughts of your lower self, the things like worry and fear and anxiety and lack and resentment and jealousy and judgment. Today, you are going to burn those away, and you're going to welcome in the new, abundance, prosperity, health, love, peace, joy. That's what we're doing. Now, this is not new age mumbo-jumbo. Okay? This is old age. Okay? <laughs> this is ancient, and I want you to know that this is scriptural. This is scriptural. In Ephesians 4, it says, Put away old ways of thinking and be transformed by the spirit of the mind. Romans 12 says something very similar. It says, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. And in 2 Corinthians 5, it says, if anyone is in the light of the Christ, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are are being made new. That is what we are doing today. We are transforming our thinking. We're letting go of the things that no longer serve us so that we can welcome in the new for the new year. Now, everybody today in their pews, at the back windowsill, and in the friendship hall will find tissue paper and pens. What we're going to do in a few minutes is I'm going to ask anybody who wants to write on that tissue paper whatever it is they want to release before the year is up. And then what I want you to do is I want you to bring that tissue paper up and burn it here in the flame, in the light. And then what you're going to do, this is important, is you're going to immediately throw it in the bowl because this is what happens. That tissue paper burns really quickly. And we don't want anybody to burn their fingers. So you're going to light it and immediately throw it in the bowl. And then as it's burning in the bowl, take a moment to just silently give gratitude to God for all the blessings of the previous year, this past year, and then also to give thanks for the healing and the renewal that is on its way. For old things are being passed away, and all things are being made new. So let us begin.